My name is Ben with Building Code Tips, and I was recently asked in the comments um, kind of about what my prep work was to get certified to be building inspector. What kind of studying I did, um, what kind of prep work I did, you know, what steps I took to get certified, um, and then to ultimately get a job as a building and then slash plumbing inspector. And uh, so I thought I'd take a little bit of time and I'd kind of dive through what I went through, kind of the studying that I did. Uh, my background, but then also jump into different avenues that people could go down based on their experience, um, at least as as I see it and what I've went through and, and what I've seen um, from my other counterparts that are inspectors in my area and what might be available for you out there. Uh, so for myself, I've been in the construction world since I was like 15. Um, I went up I helped my uncle build houses in Alaska and packed lumber uh, just to be around job sites. And I did that for a couple summers while I was in high school, uh, found my way into a college, got a degree, uh, started off in architecture, but realized that I just could not sit at a desk all day. I needed to be out, needed to be outside, needed to be moving around. So I, I jumped over to construction management, um, got a, a degree in construction management. And then I uh, kind of hopped into some internships uh, and big commercial projects, um, huge. Uh, we were building some barracks over um, in a bigger city. And, um, and then I also got in with like a smaller commercial company uh, building like small strip malls and stuff like that. But, but I kind of found that sitting at a desk was not for me. Wearing slacks, wearing button-up shirts is, is just not for me. I need to be out on the job site where guys are telling dirty jokes or uh, dirty and getting in the mud and playing with lumber and tools. And I wanted to be a part of that. Um, but I also knew that if I wore tool bags my whole life that, you know, my back would might give out on me when I'm 40 or my knees might go bad on me. And so I thought, well, let's, let's work towards something that's not as intense in the world of construction, but still a part of it. And, uh, and so I, I went from kind of the project manager thing and I hopped over to, to building houses, um, but as a superintendent and, uh, in between all of this, you know, I did spend some time actually with my bags on, you know, building decks and doing kind of small type projects in addition to just my own DIY home, home projects. Right. I mean, I've gone in and finished some basements and houses that I bought. I've, I've had bachelor pads that I've gone in and added a bedroom here and there and just kind of goofing off and having fun with projects, with home projects and building things and building something with your hands and, and being a part of it and, and just kind of being proud of what you put together. And so I, I did kind of all that stuff on the side, but then I was a superintendent building houses uh, for developments. And I spent quite a few years doing that. Uh, I think seven, eight, nine, ten years building townhouses and building uh, just regular single family houses, apartments, all that kind of stuff. And through that process, I was able to get to know the inspectors. And I just kind of saw what their lifestyle was, their quality of life, their benefits. And I said, I want that job. So I kept kind of hounding them a little bit about, you know, what is it going to take? What do you got to do? And, um, when there was an opening, I, you know, I applied for it and I was, I was lucky enough to get chosen at the time. There wasn't as many job openings as, as at least what I see there being today. Um, I look out there today and it seems as though there's quite a few job openings out there in the inspector world. And so I'm talking about more of like a building, plumbing, electrical, mechanical type inspector, not a home inspector. So a home inspector would be somebody that would go out after you buy a house or it's in contract and they would inspect the home before it sells. I would go up out after someone buys a permit. Typically I'm going to work for uh, a building inspector is going to work for a, a city or a county or some type of government entity, a home inspectors, um, you know, kind of self-employed and, uh, and their, um, you know, their works tailored to, to people hiring them, right. And houses selling and houses moving. Um, were tailored to people buying permits. I would argue that maybe the our side is a little bit more secure just because it's a government entity that's normally running it. I know that there are like third-party inspectors out there, people who specialize in 
like concrete or um, um, epoxy grouting or welding or those types of things that are that are privately owned businesses that you can get into as well but you do need to be certified um, so that that that's another avenue to go down if you're not uh, able to get in you know with a city or, or a county or something you can look at private entities and get in that way that's a good way to like maybe get your foot in the door is get certified in concrete for example or rebar and and get in with somebody doing that and then hop up to the next level um, but like I said, I feel like there are quite a few positions out there these days. And so if you want to get into the world of building inspection and, you, and you're willing to put the effort in and the studying in that, that you could pull it off. There's no doubt that experience probably helps you out as far as getting a job or, or just understanding everything and, and making it easier to transition into that type of position. But I'm also here to tell you that you don't necessarily have to have a ton of construction experience to become a building inspector. I went down to um, ICC, International Code Council. I went down to, uh, it was a few years ago, but we went down to one of their um, one of their big seminars and I got to meet all different plans examiners, and building inspectors and building officials throughout the whole United States. And I met a whole bunch of people who maybe just came out of college and they wanted to be an inspector or a plans examiner or people who just uh, maybe started off like a permit tech and they work their way up. Um, you know, just kind of learning the process as you go, but not necessarily spending all that time in the field like it used to be. It used to be, you know, the idea was, is, you know, you would be a framer for 30 years and then you'd go be a building inspector, right? And usually the inspectors were older generation people. Not anymore. It's changing. It's uh, it's now a career path that just about anybody can get into if they want to. Um, so how do you get certified? I mean, that was kind of the main question is what, 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 what did I do for prepping? And um, so I, I am certified in, um, I'm a commercial building inspector. I'm a um, plumbing inspector. I'm certified as a mechanical inspector, plans examiner fire plans examiner and i'm a certified building official even though i'm not a building official i'm an inspector i have gotten the certification for it in case i decide to move down that career path at some point um, down the road and each one of those um, certifications took me i'm going to tell you the building official cert took like nine months because there's three tests involved with that and and I average myself about two and a half to three months of studying per certification. And, um, and so I would study for, like I said, two and a half, three months before I felt confident enough to take the test. And what I did for prep work, what I did for studying was I spent a lot of time in the code book. I would um, go to iccsafe.org. I would look at all their study materials. And um, I would always get the flashcards and maybe the study guide or study companion and then the code book. And I'd spend a ton of time with a highlighter going through different chapters. I would try to study five to 10 hours a week. So that's, I would not study on the weekends. I'd let my brain kind of get all the fog out of it. But during work, you know, after, before lunchtime, I would be you know, in the book, studying, asking other inspectors questions. And, uh, and I would carry those flashcards around with me everywhere I drove. And I would, you know, be kind of like testing myself on the flashcards and trying to make sure that I generally had an understanding of where do you go in the code book? I, you know, and if I got asked this question, am I generally in the right spot? Because the tests is our open book and you only have so many hours to answer so many questions and I'm a math person. So I've kind of went through and done all the math requirements on it. And I kind of got it down to this science of, well, if there's 80 questions and I only have to get 70%, I can, you know, miss whatever that is, 10, 15 questions. So I only got to get 65 right. And if I know say 20 of them off the top of my head, then I only got to look up 45 of them. And it's like, okay, well, I have 
say three hours or three and a half hours and do the math. And it was like, if I could find the answer to any question in about four minutes, then I knew I was ready to take the test. That's kind of how I gauged it every time. So I would just study and study and I would test myself and I'd just try to make sure that, yep, I could find just about anything I wanted in the code book in about four minutes. And I had enough of an understanding that I figured I was going to get three or four, 15, whatever, right off the top of my head. And then I was also going to miss some, but I would, but I'd pass. And it worked out for me every time. Um, I was able to pass each test without, without failing and not to worry if you fail, then you can always take it again and just cost you whatever the fee is to take the test. That is kind of like the, the prep work for it. But depending on where you're applying, where you want to go, what city, county, jurisdiction, wherever you're planning to, to pursue a job, you might want to check with them, call down there, you know, watch their website, see what kind of postings they have, because you don't necessarily have to be certified to get the job. Now, this would kind of change a little bit based on your background. I mean, someone who who is totally green and you know doesn't have a lot of experience in construction is probably going to want to be certified before they apply because that's going to help them you know with the the application process and being able to get an interview and move forward um, if you have a bunch of experience in construction then maybe you don't necessarily have to be certified to get a shot at the job and what i mean by that is is at least where I work and what I've seen kind of out, you know, looking across different jurisdictions and different cities is a lot of times in the, in the application, it's going to say, you know, you're applying to be a building inspector or a plumbing inspector or whatever it is. And then it'll say, you know, required experience and then must get certified within so much time frame. And for us, it was like, well, you need to get certified within a year. It's like, okay, cool. I can do that. You know, I'll buckle down, do some studying and uh and get my certifications within a year and uh and the beauty of that is and why i kind of really press it and and push it is that a lot of times wherever you work they'll buy your study material right they're going to have a code book for you and they might buy your flashcards. they might buy your study companion um they might buy some other courses that you might find that you want to take because once you get certified you have to do continued education you have to come up with, they call them CEUs, which is like continued education credits. And so wherever you work, they're going to end up paying for these continued education courses for you every year, every couple years anyways. And so usually their budget's built in to buy study guides and stuff like that. So if you do have a background in construction, you're wanting to get into it, you may not necessarily need to be certified to get the job. Now, it's obviously going to help. The more certifications you have, uh, the more background you have, obviously, the better chance you have of, of you know, getting a position. But you also don't have to necessarily have anything. If you've got some certifications, but you don't have a lot of background, you know, you still might have that uh, ability to get in there and get an interview and, uh, and get the position. If all else fails and you don't have any certifications, you don't have any experience in construction, you're like, this just sounds like a cool job. I want to get into it. You know, start by getting out there and doing things that might be resume builders. So Habitat for Humanity, you can go, um, you can offer your time to, um, you know, help build a house, you know, for free, right? It's a volunteer time. Um, you can work on your own home projects, maybe you finish your basement, you spend some time kind of working through some of that stuff understanding the language, you know, what are headers, what are beams, uh, what are sole plates, what are studs, joists, rafters, you know, you kind of get into the language of it and you start talking the lingo. That's going to help you out down the road. Um, spend some time reading plans. What does it look like? Um, you know, can you read a plan? Do you understand what all the abbreviations are, foundation plans, elevations, and, and work yourself through all that and start to gain that knowledge. You can also go the route of kind of working your way up as like a permit tech, right? So you can get in with a, a city or a county, just do working in the office, but doing like permit type stuff, right? So you'd be the one that maybe issues permits. Um, you might look at site plans or you might look at like over the counter projects as far as like a plan review thing. 
and build up your knowledge base. And then, like I said, maybe do some work on the side. Um, I've even just go to new developments and walk through the new developments for like new houses, right? A lot of times you can get in and you can walk through a house that's just been framed and then you can look around and say, oh yeah, here's the stairs and how do the stairs connected together and do the, the riser heights and the, and the tread depths meet the requirements of what the code book says? And, um, does this window have to be tempered or not? Like you can work through some of all that stuff, just being out, but, but you got to put the time in. Um, so that was kind of the basis of what, what I went through and what I would see out there for anybody who's wanting to get into it as far as studying and prep work and stuff like that. Um, where I'm at, I didn't have to have any other special certifications. My, the city I work for didn't tell me that I needed to have any, uh, uh, special level certifications just strictly for their city. Um, so I don't know anything about that, but maybe where you go. There are some requirements for some additional education, but I have to believe that that would be requirements for you after you have the job. It wouldn't necessarily be a requirement to get the job, but I may be wrong. Um, that's just kind of my perception on the way I would see things. I didn't take any prep courses or find any online courses. I just kind of did it old school and I just spent a lot of time studying in the book because it's an open book test. And you've got to know how to get in and out of the book and find the answers that you need. So you can take all the courses that you want to kind of get to the general knowledge, but you still have to be able to find what you're looking for in the book. Because I don't know that anybody's going to know 65 or 70 questions right off the top of their head. They're just too intricate, um, especially, you know, if you're looking at like the IRC, which is the International Residential Code or the IBC, I mean, the, the, the book's three, four inches thick. It'd just be too hard to, to know all that intricate information. But there are, I have seen, there are courses out there that you can take to help you pass your tests. Um, when I did the building official certification, it was a little overwhelming for myself. It was three separate tests and it got into like legal side of things beyond just building code and administrative. And so I did find, um, kind of a off the cuff website it was called studythecode.com and they had some stuff in there that you could buy some courses or some study test materials um, that I did get and the city paid for where I work for so that I could then get certified because it then helps them out um, with certifications and the ability to have people that are qualified and uh, so they paid for all that study material for me and I went out I put the time in and I got certified now I'm not necessarily using that certification because I'm building a plumbing inspector, but I have it. I now have to get more CEUs. So I have to get, uh, um, I think it's six CEUs, which is like 60 hours of continued education every three years versus if I didn't have that, I'd only have to get like four or four and a half CEUs. So the more you get, the more continued education you have to do. But again, depending on where you work, they will pay for that education to keep you certified. So this is Ben with Building Code Tips. Definitely hit the comments below if you got any questions. I mean, the purpose of this video is to give you guys as much information as possible so that you kind of know what avenue you need to go down to get certified or to work towards that inspector position that you might be looking for. Um, I hope you made it through the whole video. And if you did, I hope it answered all those questions. Um, if I could ask a favor, it's, you know, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to keep this channel grown and get this kind of information out to whoever's out there that wants to pursue a career in, uh, in the world of inspection or just get into construction in general, or maybe they're just working on their DIY home projects and they need a little extra help. So I appreciate the support and, uh, we'll see you on the next video.